late. What's what's the most that you would hope to get out of today? In talking to the to the gubernatorial candidates, and I'll leave it open to whoever wants to answer. It. I think first we want to have uh, an opportunity to begin to build a relationship with whoever may become governor, and while. Uh, every announced candidate for governor is not here. Just by having this event, it kind of gets, puts us in, in, visible, in view of um, desiring that kind of relationship, regardless of the party. Uh, second, it's a way of uh, uh, giving our own members of congregations and the community a chance to uh, exercise their citizenship and express their values in the public arena, even at this relatively early stage in the gubernatorial election process. I would say, um, Bob, I would just add to that, that we're going to hear a lot in this election about deficits and uh, spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want, we want uh, this uh, event today and, and others like it to be a place where uh, the human component gets talked about, and particularly the kinds of discrepancies that Pastor Paul uh, Slack was talking about, where whether we're in an economic uh, crisis or deficit or not. The truth is uh, that people of color in this state have been living uh, in a recession for decades, as, mm -hmm. as Pastor Paul said. But I think that um, this has to be uh, forced into the conversation, or we will only have a conversation between now and November about scarcity, about what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And we have, to, we have to do a lot better than that. Bob, another thing that um, Pastor Stephen is, is talking about is one of the conversations, whoever becomes governor, whatever party, they're probably going to talk about their party line issues. You know, if it's a Republican, they're probably going to talk about cutting taxes as a way to balance the budget. If it's a Democrat, they're probably going to talk about uh, spending so that we can actually spend our way out of this. Neither option is going to work. So we need someone who's actually going to partner with all of our communities to find actually a different way for us to come out of uh, our deficit that we're in and seek for a recovery from all people who live in our state. That's going to be a new kind of conversation. It's going to have to take somebody who's willing to step out of their partisan hat and really partner with all stakeholders from every sector of our society. So we want that conversation to at least begin today. I don't know if there's other people here who want to ask questions, but so then what's the next step? Do you know what you'll do next after today? Well, we've got to continue uh, to work on building relationships with all candidates in the field because the most important thing is that we are in conversation with them because we have a stake in what happens in our state as well. And we want to be acknowledged as people of faith, people who live here, work here, partner here, pastor here. We want to have a stake in seeking those solutions. It is in our interest. It is in the interest of people who both attend our congregations and who are in our communities that we're able to have the kind of conversations that we need to seek for new solutions. But specifically, we also intend. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Specifically, we also intend to have a thousand house parties uh, this fall with members of our congregations and the neighbors of our congregations to talk about how the how how our own values, how our own faith intersects with uh, how we make decisions publicly, including in the context of the election uh, of a governor and we would like to post election sit down uh, with many of the folks in our congregations and the new governor and some of the new congressional leaders uh, le legislative leaders uh, and then begin to sort of craft a plan uh, so that the, the, the new governance in this state takes into account the kinds of issues we're talking about here today.